Hey everybody, welcome to Confessions. Uh, my name is the Falcro, Richard, if you want to call me by my actual name. Um, I've already opened up the stream over here so that I can, if, if there's a link or something, I can grab it out of that chat, but I'll be focused here. Welcome Epiphonium and anybody else that's out there. I see Epi's out there because he and I were having a little chat beforehand. Epi is, uh, Epi is standing in solidarity with me as a Cinemer citizen, and uh, he is having a Cinemer moment uh, because uh, we started a day off with him uh, thinking we're having uh, apparently concessions. Maybe he's thinking confections. I don't, I don't know. I think he needs a snack. I think Epi needs a snack. That's, that's all I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I've been... I've been having a pretty good time. I've been doing a lot of introspection. And that's why tonight's stream has the catchy clickbait title of Be Polite. What the fuck does that mean? Well, there's a saying, and it's been around forever. I don't know who said it. It doesn't matter. People know it's truth. Everything I need to know about life... I learned in kindergarten and it's absolutely true you don't need to know anything more than you were taught in kindergarten about basic interaction with people and the world around you to get by everywhere now, whether you'll do well or not well or struggle or not struggle that's a completely different conversation But you have to be polite in order to be... That's one of the things, is you have to be polite in order to get things to work. Work? What do you mean, work? Well, what I mean by work is, if I'm mean to Jimmy, because he took one of my cherries out of my snack tray... and I'm mean and say bad things about him, then I'm not being polite. But if I go talk to him and I say, hey, that wasn't very nice. You stole my cherry out of my snack tray. Jimmy, I don't want you to do that anymore. Blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. There's just a difference in the way we learn to react. And we were started to, and we are started to be taught that very early on in life, before school, but I still like the adage of, you know, everything about life, everything I need to know about life, I learned in kindergarten. I love that statement. So I grew up being polite, talking to others uh, in the way I wanted them to talk to me. Uh, of course, I heard the, the whole thumper thing, too, from my parents and grandparents. You know, if you have nothing nice to say, then don't say nothing at all. Keep your mouth shut. I was pretty good at all that. I got around pretty good. I mean, I wasn't the most popular kid in school, but I wasn't the, I wasn't the most unpopular either. So, you know, mediocrity is okay in certain circumstances. But I wasn't running a popularity contest anyway. So I was polite and I got by and I and 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 I had the issue from time to time with other people where I was falsely accused or they were assholes or I was a dick or who knows. Stuff happened. A couple of fights, a couple of sorted words, you know, sorted words. Um typical childhood stuff. Then I became an adult. <laughs> and by adult, I mean, in a millisecond, I became an adult because the number of years I had existed and breathed air on this planet became 18. I think most of us would agree that at 18, we didn't know a whole lot of anything, much about nothing. 
So I started living my adult life with no clue as to how to adult or how to be an adult or what any of that entailed. You've all heard the story of, you know, the things that I did and the things that were come that were to come in my very recent or very near future uh, with my family passing. My first my mother, then my grandmother, then my grandfather, all within about 18 months. My life was going to change very drastically and I didn't even really know how to be me yet. Then I got mad, as I said a few videos ago, and my, my reaction to getting mad about my family leaving me and unfairly thinking about it, because I didn't process the grief, I didn't, I didn't do any of that important work. Um, sorry. Exactly, Epi. A shutdown. Um, I cut myself off emotionally from anything that could potentially hurt or bother me. Hey, Feisty, welcome. Glad to see the stream worked out well. Um, and it all came out of me in anger. And eventually, that anger, when I was a bachelor and single, it didn't really matter. I might be a dick to the guy at the store or get in an argument with somebody about something unassociated with this, but I was the only person in my family, so I didn't have anybody close to me to fight with, uh, or to be mean to, or anything like that. It was just me. So then I became a married man. And when I became a married man, then I had responsibilities, because I bought a house, and I did all these other things. And then I had kids. And I'm angry this whole time. Why am I angry this whole time? Well, here it is in a nutshell. I know, I let up as a lot of, lot of, blah, 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 to get to here. I hated me, and I wasn't nice to me any, during any of that time. And eventually, that not nice to me, and that constant negativity, the tape that was running in my head, that, that finally started coming out, and unfortunately, it came out in a very negative manner against the people that I cared about the most. And I truly do. That that's a true statement. Even at the time that this was all happening and I was abusing my children um, with my terrible words and screaming and, and that sort of thing and abusing my ex-wife with all the garbage that I did to her, trapping and things like that, it, it, it was just, it's terrible. I was not a good human being. Um, that's how that all came out. And I really did care about those people during that whole time. Like I said, there's those two sides to me that happen at the same time that I'm being this angry prick and saying these terrible, heinous things. There's also this normal me that's saying, dude, what are you doing that for? What the hell, man? I was like, that's a little over the top, don't you think? Self-talk, it's fun. But I now know that your self-talk has to change. So when I made that decision to be a different person and do something different because I didn't want to be abusive to those that I loved any longer. I wanted to be normal or at least more normal. I did that. I, I made up my mind. I found the tools I needed. I did the things that I had to do. And I stopped abusing my children. And I stopped abusing my ex-wife. And for the most part, with a few notable argumentative exceptions where I slipped, uh, I didn't abuse anyone else either. Um, I truly did change. 
but there's a piece of the story that was missing. Some of you already know where I'm going with this. I changed for everybody and became a better person. Except me. I never cut me slack for a heartbeat. Not a single one. I continued up until six months ago abusing myself, being impolite, being rude. And I can't even, I can't even say the, the things that I think, thought, however you want to put that, because yeah, they're still up there, but I fight them now. I can't even put that into verbiage. I, I would have to write it down and memorize it in order to, and then I still couldn't get the infection. My, I'm brutal. Uh, I, I am super brutal to me. So to be polite has nothing to do with anybody else. It has to do with me, like the rest of this program. This is what works for me. This is how I'm living my life, and this is how I'm trying to improve me. Uh, because I'm learning that I never forgave myself. I never stopped abusing myself. I still somehow tried to... Uh, I still tried to somehow... Uh, turn the death of my family into my fault somehow. And this comes back to that whole thing about feeling guilty when I would prove someone in my family wrong. My mom, if I, if I proved that I was right and she was wrong, I felt guilty about that. Instead of, haha, got one over on mom. That's not how I felt about that. Inside, I felt guilty about that. This is as a child, but you know, I didn't have a whole lot of time with my mother as an adult. Uh, she passed when I was uh, 22. So, and Epi, I'm, I'm not thinking badly about myself in the same way now. Now I'm fighting against it and I'm changing the tapes. I change the tapes in my head for everybody else, but I never changed them for me. I still said the same crap and bullshit to me that I said to everybody else in spades. It was even worse because... I'm the hardest of all on me. Um, even to this day, I hold myself to a higher standard. People tell me, oh, you're a hard worker. You do everything so well. I'm a hard worker because I'm lazy. I only want to do it one time. And I do it well because I'm lucky enough to have ability. Uh, it's, it's not a practice thing. Music, I got to practice at. Being mechanical and doing things with metal, and inst I didn't have to practice at that. I had to learn some things, how to manipulate and things like that, but I didn't have to practice. I just did it. Um, yeah, it's it's hard when, when you lose a parent early on, and worse at 16, arguably, than, than 23. It's just not, you know, I, I should be complaining right now about having to take care of my mother. That's the way life is meant to be. She's lived her life, she's had her fun, and she's dinner retirement, and I gotta take her the stuff and do the things, and then she needs me to find this, and then I gotta, I gotta go look through her stuff to find something else, and she's, you know, whatever. The typical parental stuff that you gotta do. I never have had that opportunity, and that's been tough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I only want to do my job one time once so truth be told in my head I'm saying man this job really sucks I don't want to do this again so I'm going to double check this and this and this and make sure that all that other stuff is okay in in my rule book my version of the truth that's normal that's the way it's supposed to be <laughs> So what I've been working on in this journey with all this stuff, as you guys all well know, is is opening myself up to, to new things, 
talking about my past, being open about it, being transparent about problems I've had in my past life, awful things I've done, but also about sharing new things, things that I surprise myself with sometimes. Something I surprised myself with recently is art. Drawing, painting, sketching, scribbling, whatever you want to call it. Uh, doodling. Uh, picked up my iPad and I started uh, messing around with... Uh, started messing around with the drawing program uh, that I bought to, called Procreate. Well, drawing, painting, it, it's a bazillion things. If you're an Apple user, you do it now. Apple musical things doesn't work in my brain. But this Apple art thing, I'm, I'm having a pretty good time with this. I'm going to show you guys a couple of pictures. Um, I'm going to try and get these both. Can I make this smaller? Give me a minute. Oh, I know what I could do, I'll bet. Let me go open the other one first. Um, these are just two or so of my, I think three. Anyway, just some artwork that I've been, been doing. Um, so then we've got this one. Yeah, okay. And then the last one is this one. Uh, where did that one go? There, there. Oh, okay, okay. There. Now let me close this. Ah, I'll figure out how to use my computer here pretty soon. Um, <clears throat> put that back in the middle of the thing. So close that one. And then if I make this one... Full screen, alt tab, full screen, alt tab, tab, full screen, now, alt tab. Okay, so now I'm going to present, I'm going to, Keebler, welcome, good to see you, thanks for hanging out. Um, so tonight's Dragon Classy Diamond Art, I'm about to show some art. Um, this has to do with, with tonight's subject. Um, I promise. I'm not just, you know, hey, look at me, I'm doing art. That, that's not what this is about. But anyway, uh, we're going to present to screen, entire screen, this one right here, share. So, this one here that you're looking at is... Me, let me make it full screen just for a minute while I'm talking about it, and then I'll come back to this pose or whatever you want to call it. This is the first completed picture, drawing, painting, whatever that you want to go. This 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 is foggy forest. Some of you may have been able to see. I don't know if it's showing up. Uh, on the screen, the, the name of the file. That's what I named it as Foggy Forest. And I, I was just trying to make a, a backscape, landscape, whatever you want to call it, of um, of a forest, something close. I tried to make it be from above, like you're in the hills, the foothills, uh, below a mountain. Clearly, you're looking at the mountain straight ahead. Let me come back to the other one. I'll drop myself. Can I drop myself in here? No, I don't like that. What if we do this? Nope, I don't like that either. What if I do that? Nope, I don't like that. So, this is the one it is, right here. So, <clears throat> now, I, uh, I shared this with myself in email and sent it over to my PC so I can show you guys how I do this because I still don't know how to make my iPad show you stuff like Jade does. I don't... I, it will, I may figure that one out. But anyway, so this is the first one that I did. And then 
I went, now let's see if I can get this right. Go over here, choose this screen, alt tab over to this one. I'm talking about introspection. I'm gonna make it full screen for a minute. Uh, is that full screen there? No, there, that's what, okay, now, there. You're looking at this going, what the hell? You call that a drawing, a painting? Whatever, I don't know really how to define what this is because it's on the iPod, it's electronic. But there is some mixing of color and some melding that happens. But you're like, what what it what what the hell is this? Well for this one, you gotta look pretty close. You gotta look pretty close. You guys can see my mouse, I'm presuming. This is the darkness within, or the darkness inside. Um I'm talking about my introspection and this is how I'm I'm relating this art to this because it became introspective when I made this particular picture. Um, I originally started it out to be like a landscape sunrise thing right at right at the right at the break of sunrise as you can see from the background and then I was playing around with masking. I'm going to make this back to, to me and it again. Um, I started playing around with masking, and somehow the first layer, I had it masked off, and I added a second layer. I don't know how I did this. I added a second layer that was completely black. I'm like, oh, well, that screwed that up. And then when I was messing around with trying to get rid of that layer, because I didn't know how to get rid of it, I made the black layer transparent-ish. So it was still there, but it was now overlaid, and you could see the stuff I had done before. Now here's if you now if you follow, now that you've been looking at this for a minute, you might your eyes may have adjusted. You look here, there's this this hill here, but then there's a cliff. It comes up and then a plateau that then goes to a mountain with a ridge line. And this is far in the distance. And then there's some kind of a reflection right here that's coming from the glint of the sun. Maybe you're squinting your eyes. I don't know. And then the hillside continues on, or the mountainside continues on across here. And you can now, you're probably starting to realize, oh, there's, yeah, I see the, I see the, the darkness is starting to push back here. And I can see that that's all in silhouette. And if you really get into this, there's trees, there's greenery. This is a lake. Um, there, there's a road. There's a lot in here that you have to look at it for a while before you'll see it. And let me close this for a minute. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and get back to me. Because now I'm going to make my point. This is how I envision me. What I understand about myself is I'm looking inside of me to see who am I. And I know 60 seems really late to be trying to figure this out. But since I never figured it out in the first place... Now's as good a time as any. Not to mention I'm happier and feel better and a whole lot of other cool stuff too. Um, this is what I see. This is what it, I don't know that landscape inside of me at all. It's all darkness to me except for this little tiny bit that I've started this last few months to open up, to shine my visual lantern light onto so to speak my mind's eye opening i don't know what metaphorical thing i can do to sound smart because i'm not i'm just talking about me and this internal stuff that's what i see is that darkness that almost it's if i look long enough and i'm and i'm not afraid to be there 
you know, because the sound of the bear walking behind me doesn't make me shit my pants and run um, <clears throat> and become the bear's breakfast because I shit my pants and ran. Um, it, it helps... It helps me think about the relationship I have with myself, that I really don't know me very well. Neither does anyone else. But we're going to get to know us. Now, these aren't like my other streams. I only run these for about an hour, so we got about a half an hour to go. Um, and I have a little bit more I'm going to talk about on that, but I'm going to show you one more picture, the final picture. Let me alt tab over to it first and make it full full screen. There we go. And I got to blow this one up a little bit because it was made for me, so to speak. So we're going to present screen entire that one. So, because this relates, this last one relates to something that happened today that's incredibly wonderful. So, close that and shrink that and then open this one. There it is. <clears throat> I know I could have done that much more smoothly, but hey, it's me. Look at this. This is from a place called Crayola, 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 hang on, let me, there it is, I want to close that, thank you. So now, are these others still open? Yeah, the inside dark still there. Okay, so stop sharing that. That one came about, it's not important what I did. I was just playing around with AI. I went and found a free AI picture maker thing and I wanted a psychedelic colored uh, eight pointed star. Here's why, today, my roommate knocks on my door and has this tablet. This one right here, as a matter of fact, has this tablet in her hand. And she's kind of fiddling around with it, you know. She's, she says, uh, she says, uh, you draw, right? Like, um, yeah. I scribble on the paper a little bit. Mess around with that. Got my colors and stuff. And she says, well, this is my, this is going to be my journal for my Ramadan journey this month. My first Ramadan journey this month. She's, she's ce not celebrating, sorry, she's observing her first Ramadan. And this is her journal book about thoughts, things, feelings. And she asked me to draw her. This is just the beginning of this, by the way. I just sketched the outline. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. I'm going to try and show it here. Again. Hang on. Uh, I'm going to have to change... here and there um, it's up to date there we go so try and get that up there in a way in which you might be able to see it okay kind of I don't know how well you're seeing the the outline. I know it's lined paper, and that's part of what's screwing this camera up. But anyway, that is uh, that is going to be the temple in the background. 
all in silhouette. And then I'm going to put a crescent moon with an eight-pointed star near its tip. These are all traditional visual things for Ramadan. And I'll show this again as I get further into it. I just started on a few hours ago doing the rough sketch. Um, so I was honored by that, that she would come to me. I mean, how can you say no to that? It's, it's kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to mess it up. I want her to, to like what I do. And I only get one shot at this because I'm drawing it on the first page of her journal. Um, so I do the rough outline and the sketch of what things, where the elements need to be. And then I'll go back with my colored pencils and crayons and whatever else I use and start making it look like what I want it to look like. And uh, add the color to it, make it into her picture. I hope she likes it. I'm not an artist, but I'll tell you what, it feels good to do what I'm doing. I don't know if that's going to be the same for everybody. Your thing might be gardening, which I also enjoy. Um, I get satisfaction from it. It helps me feel like I have purpose and meaning in my life. I think we all need that, and I think that's something I've lacked. So music may not be my thing on the iPad because I don't get it. I, I don't. I can't figure out how to even make the connection to the thing and the MIDI noise happen. In the, I, but the drawing, painting, procreate thing... Maybe playing around with some AI later, because it was kind of fun to make that eight-pointed star. I used the, the online AI, like I said, to make that star. Just because I wanted to see how it would work, I just typed the description of it and and did that and, and uh, whatnot. That's not going to be the eight-pointed star that I'm going to draw for uh, her picture, because... It's not very traditional to do, to have psychedelic colors and all that. It's traditional eight-pointed star, a circle with eight points, basically. Um, and uh, there's a lot of imagery. They use uh, sometimes a, a thing of food because there's fasting. Sometimes there's drummers. I've learned a lot to do this. So these are... Um, <clears throat> these These are insights into me that I didn't even realize fascinated me. Um, I'm enjoying finding out about what they do during what Muslims do during Ramadan. I never knew what it was. And I'll admit it. I said it as a joke. Happy Ramadan, everybody. Cause I had not a fucking clue what it was. Well, I do now. And I'm sorry that I, in ignorance was rude like that. Cause it's, it's a fasting time. It's a, you know, it's like if you're if you're a Christian, you're fasting in prayer. Ramadan's kind of like that. But anyway, they got like these drummers that would come through and really early before the sun would come up. Because one of the things you you do is you don't you fast during the day. You can only eat it in the dark times. I don't know. It's it's a it's a thing. Okay, it's ask the Muslims. Okay, I'm not getting that deep in this yet. Um, but anyway, I, I I'm I'm being funny now. But I was absolutely honored that she would ask me to make something in in representation of her first Ramadan observation journey this month of Ramadan and I'm like what a compliment you can't get much better hi Pindar what's happening good to see you taking care of that foot I'm watching you. I'm watching Mandar too, but he's pretty awesome, so he gets a pass. He gets a pass. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, see, I've never. <laughs> I've drawn a lot of things in my life on paper and sketch pads and pens and things as, as just as whatever, but I just throw it away when I'm done with it. I just tear it up or burn it in the wood stove or whatever, you know, it, it wasn't something to be looked at again or saved for any reason. It was just something I doodled, something I, 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 I did. 
And now I understand that that's, that's some of me that I'm putting down on that paper or into that screen. That's some of my feelings and thoughts and reasonings. Um, <laughs> I try. I try. I distracted myself now. Anyway, this 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 tablet right here, this iPad. If if Ali Gertilia gets to see this, Team Pink, see it's true. Uh, I have a I have a pink iPad, tenth gen. Uh, this may not be my ticket to make music, play around with music. But this might be my ticket to explore myself more and express myself in a new positive way um and i'm excited about that i'm genuinely excited about this journey and i i gotta tell you my my journey kind of started with the music but then I started meeting other people here on YouTube, and I've met some really neat artists, both musically, graphically, um, sonically. There's millions of different kinds of ways to do art, dragon classy art. Um, well, kind of an etch a sketch, brother. Um, although I have not tried to make the screen clear so I can see the mechanical part in the side yet. <laughs> you know, and you had an Etch-A-Sketch, brother. You know you did it. You know you did it. You wanted to see that XY. <laughs> well, actually, it's XY. But, yeah, you, you did it. <laughs> Love it. Love it. But that's a neat discovery that I that that I found another way to potentially express myself, even if it's not hydrate, folks. It's important. Um, even if it's not what you think you're good at or what you think you should do, explore it all. Check it out. That's really that's really the the point I'm driving home here. Other than be brave enough to explore it in the first place. Uh, recently Jade Starr was interviewing someone I believe it was Lini but it doesn't really matter who it was Jade posed this question when you started your musical journey moving forward to today what was the most difficult step and they answered however they answered. But to, that made me stop and think seriously. What, 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 is, what is the hardest thing I've done? Is it trying to learn the fretboard? Is it the circle of fourths? Is it trying to figure out how to make clean bar chords with my fingers? How to do exercises to try and increase my... Blah, 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 blah. What was the hardest part? None of those things were the hardest part. None. The hardest part was deciding to start in the first place. That. That was the hardest part. And for me, this last six, eight months has been exactly that. I, 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 that's when it got better and gooder. It was because I started and it was the hardest thing to do. I agonized for months about how to do this, how to talk about my feelings and what would go through my head and how to not come off like some kind of a pompous ass jerk know-it-all talking about, well, I'm a 
former abuser and recovered and I no longer do this to people because I'm a better human being and it, fuck that and the horse it rode in on. It's bullshit. That's not who I am. And if I tried to present this like that, it would come off as fake and it would be. Um, I just started doing it and that was hard to do. It was scary. I just started talking about it. I started talking about me. I was honest about my feelings. I was honest about what I'd done. I was honest. And, and I, I've shared with, of course, people personally close to me in my life, significant others over the years and things like that. They, they, they have a right to know about my past. And they have learned about that early on. And we had, you know, serious conversations about that. But uh, never did it this way. I never looked at it from a from the perspective of, going back and fixing it, making it better. Um, yeah. And that's what's happening. After making that first hard step, now it's getting better. Now I'm able to start seeing it in light. I'm able to start moving forward. I try. Thank you, Pendar. I, I will, I will take that compliment and run with it. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's a very touchy subject to talk to. That's why I put so much time into the description. And if you're new here, please read the description. And maybe read through it more than once. Maybe the first two or three times you come in, read the, the bottom part, not whatever I'm talking about at the very top. But underneath that, it talks about what this is about and what I'm... Because there's things that are going to be said here. I'm going to talk about plain terms abuse and suicide and it, it, there's going to be sexual assault words and all that stuff's going to happen and i want people to be aware of that because if you were an abused person those kinds of things can be exceptionally triggering and that's not fair um and that is the furthest thing from what this is about. I want, I, I want no one to be triggered by this. If you're triggered, if you're bothered, if you're offended, please leave. This is not the space for you right now. You're welcome to come back. You are welcome to come back maybe another time. But I, I just want to say that I try and say something to that effect in every stream. Because this can be intense and I realize that. Um... My, my Wednesday Lame Live and my other silly streams, I'm, I'm a cut up. I'm just being the goofball class clown. That's, that's, that's the persona I like to put out there. Um, fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> um, but this has been a hell of a journey, and taking that first step was the hardest one. So thanks, Jade, if you're, if you're lurking out there tonight, this morning for you. Um, thanks for asking that question because it really sent me down a, a good road of thought and uh, I think there's a lot of positive that's coming from it so I'm going to keep arting and I'm going to keep doing the things I'm doing taking my medication <laughs> My happy pills, as I like to call them, they don't really cheat. they don't really make me happy. I make me happy. I make me happy by making positive changes in my life and doing things differently and not being insane anymore. Insane in the respect that I'm not doing the same things over and over and over again, expecting a different result. So be polite to yourself, even if you're not an abusive or a previously abusive prick whatever if you're not somebody like me check your tape check your cd your mp3 the one that plays in your head because i talk to myself out loud clearly um i talk to myself out loud but everybody talks to themselves inside their head if you think a thought you talk to yourself in your head there's my sign, change my mind. Um, so, everybody talks to themselves. But listen to that for a minute. Just take, just take a second. 
a minute, a day. If you don't do it very often, maybe a week. I don't know. Whatever it takes to just honestly look at what you think to yourself throughout the day. What kind of thoughts roll through your mind? What things do you think about? Um, if 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 you're if you're thinking about sick cattle and 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 dead vegetation, there there might be something wrong in your life. Um, if you're thinking about the roses that are beginning to grow in the yard as spring comes on, and the daffodils came up, and you know that's then then things are probably right, and I want to stay there. So I encourage you to be polite, be nice to you. Just be nice. It's not too terribly difficult. Um, yeah, it is. That's a bald-faced lie. It is difficult. And the most difficult part will be trying to do it the very first time you try to do it. All the things that I did to my family, all the terrible things I said, the stuff that they were put through was wrong and terrible. But I'm not that guy anymore, and I don't have to beat myself up 30 years later for things I no longer do. All I have to do is openly and honestly recognize that I did them, that I still have the potential to do the same things today if I don't use my toolbox, And art is becoming one of those tools in my toolbox. So, uh, I, I don't know if uh, I don't know if any of you have a negative tape, but if you do, I I I just I just want to encourage you to change it to make it into something at least a little more positive. You know, because the 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 things I called myself despicable asshole worthless piece of shit garbage worthless I mean it just goes on and on and on and on and I can't I cannot verbalize it the way it happens in my head I can't it's impossible because it's constant it's instantaneous and it's everything at once I process it one thing at a time but when my brain dumps that garbage, it literally just turns the bed upside down. Yeah, it's very difficult to dig yourself out of the negative self-talk. That's not an excuse for my abuse of other people. There is no excuse for that. There is, there is no excuse for abusing another human being, ever. Um, yeah, ask me how I know. I hope your son can work through that and continue to make progress towards being more positive, being polite to himself. I don't know, I've been doing this for like a whole six months, so I'm some kind of fucking armchair expert. Um, but I can say this, it gets better if you keep trying. Fake it till you make it. Uh, I'm glad that he's trying, because I believe that the trying is half the battle. Um, I, I, I really do think that the trying is half the battle. So. I don't know why that was sitting there. It's probably been sitting there the whole stream. Sorry, I'm not stoned. I, on purpose, on these streams, I don't partake until after the stream. Um, I want to be sober for you when I'm doing this. I, I, I don't want to be in an altered state of mind in any way, any more than I'd want to be drunk at work or anything or high at work. Um, so, yeah, I do smoke. I, I, I partake, but not when I do this. Um, this is important. I'm serious about this and this isn't my, this isn't my joke shows or my goof off shows. This is, this is stuff that matters. And I hope that 
some tiny piece of information will make a difference in somebody's life, whether abused or abuser. Maybe someone who is abused can see something differently from the perspective of their abuser, and I'm not making their abuse right. That's not what this is about. As I said just a minute ago, abuse is never right and never okay. But maybe that person that was abused can understand their abuser a little bit more. Uh, this is the assumption the abuser has has or is attempting to make a change in their life. Um, and for the abuser that, first of all, if you don't think you have a problem, you're in denial. You do. You have a problem. If you're not abusing anybody else anymore, you're probably still abusing yourself because that's the most common thread that I've met from talking to other abusive people, men and women alike. The person they're most mean to is themselves. And that helps perpetuate the whole negative self-talk. Well, you're welcome. If these things aren't talked about, yes. what I have, my abusive personality disorder, whatever you want to call it, I, I'm not. I, that's that's such a cliche thing anymore. It, it sounds like I'm trying to make it into a medical. It is. It is a medical problem. It's a medical problem because I take fluoxetine every day. To help me stay more balanced emotionally inside so I can process through this stuff. And without that emotional balance, I can't do this. I can't. And I don't mean this show. I mean this life. This I can't. I, I was... Honestly, I was waiting to die. I wasn't actively trying to kill myself or anything like that. But I was just waiting a day. It'll come. And then I won't have to deal with this shit anymore. My fucking brain will finally shut the fuck up. I won't have to listen to me anymore. Of course, I don't know that. I may still be able to hear all this crap and talk the same way I'm talking right now afterwards. None of us really know. <clears throat> At least until we kick it. I'm glad he's trying. And, I, and I'm glad that you're seeing something that makes you feel like he's making progress. Um... But anyway, I shine lights on strange things all the time. One of them being my past and this abusive crap. Because if mental health issues are not talked about, they'll always be the same scrubby little... And not all mental health is abusive pricks like me. Mental health can have to do with depression, which I also have. None of these things are excuses for how I act or how I am to other people. Or to myself. But they are still facts. Your version of the truth may be different because I believe that everyone has their own version of the truth. And we're not talking about absolutes. The sky is blue. The, the way the light refracts is scientifically proven. It, it's, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about everybody has their own set of values and experiences and things. A woman that grew up and was raped as a young girl is not going to have the same psyche and outlook on life. Even if she becomes a well-adjusted person, it still changes her fundamentally as opposed to someone else born at the, nearly the exact same moment of time and raised in a similar environment that was not raped as a young girl. It's different. Those things change you. Negative self-talk changes you. Doing things changes you. Having a mental illness changes you. Doing something about it changes you. I just want the change to be positive. Or at least have the opportunity to be positive. Both for the abused, most importantly, and for the abuser. I want the abuser to know that they can change. There is Stuff can be different. You don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. 
Anyway, I'm prattering on because I'm passionate about this. I really care. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's not super popular, and that's okay. I, I, I'll do it if nobody watches. Because somebody might be able to watch this in a replay later and get something out of it then. I don't have to affect a change in someone else today to be a positive influence on the world. I can do that 30 years from now because somebody saw an MP4 of this or one of my other shows. Yeah. But that's what tonight was about, was the self-abuse. I want to not only shine a light on being an abusive person to others, the people that I cared about the most, my children and my ex-wife, um, but also to myself. And that's, I think, very overlooked when it comes to this. It was certainly overlooked in my therapy and the class. I was lucky. I was with a group of other abusers that were absolutely committed to being different people, calling each other to the carpet and staying accountable for what we said and how we said it and knowing the rules and doing the things and taking the steps. But nobody, not a single one of us, addressed the abuse that we put on ourselves. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're coming up real fast on that one hour mark. And I don't like to run these on. And I don't like to pratter. I like to talk because, you know, I think I got a sexy voice. That's a joke. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to let you guys go. I'm glad you were here, Pendar. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. I appreciate every one of you or none of you that don't come. If, it, if it's, it's all good. I don't care. This is this is for the people it's for. And uh, be nice to you tomorrow, the rest of tonight, today, whatever it is for you. Pat yourself on the back so you did okay on that. The thing I've started to do this week is my final thought, I promise. The thing I started doing just this week, yesterday as a matter of fact, when I'm doing something that could potentially frustrate me and I'm feeling frustration or anger building inside of me, and I don't get angry. I don't let that frustration boil over. As soon as I'm finished with that task, I say thank you to me. So, say thank you to yourself. Remember, nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. <laughs>